is it is, is there voice because yeah, we yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yeah. because we have had some problems in another room it's okay we didn't say anything which we shouldn't say so we'll start how i'm Jeremy. i've got chris here and billy is coming is he coming in yeah hey yeah i was expecting you you said you were gonna come oh. yeah so i'll start all over again because you just oh, so just two seconds yes. so i'm Terimani, rich carl chris yeah. leanne and billy so today welcome to the ult sig uh, i know it's not a popular thing that's why the room is like this di is difficult it can be something very difficult hi eileen so i'm just going to cover a bit around the sig so you know what the sig does the sig obviously is uh under the alt umbrella uh, and then i'll talk a bit around anti-racism and we can have a discussion about what each people think anti-racism is about or not and then obviously i'll give i'll have to sell you right the idea of joining the sig you, you've been buying stuff outside as in buy, buying ideas i'm going to sell ideas as well so we have a team so chris is also a member so i'm the chair chris is the other officer we've got uh, a pe uh, people who are actually attending online you'll see the picture very shortly and so the sig was actually before it was a sig it was a group uh before november 2021 was a, a group not under alt became a sig in november 2021 and we've got remit which is the typical thing text you know very heavy text about the group operates and the as a community of practice to empower and what the group is about it's basically anti-racism and learning technology the slides are available by the way and very important thing here is live experiences safe space anti-racing teaching practice uh and community awareness which is a big thing that we need to do uh now okay sorry it's actually a pdf i didn't get the so you've got myself and then rachel is a new officer so she's our external engagement officer you'll be getting emails from her mostly in the future uh, and Amino is also a new external engagement officer. I'm the type of, of leadership that I do is I like to put the team forward. So we are actually going to do an, a blog around each officer very soon so that they have visibility and people know who they are. Um, and Ola Tunde is a vice chair. And then we've got Tanya, who's our internal engagement officer. We've got Chris, who's our events officer. And some of our activities, so we've been, we have three types of activities, discussion forum, which is a bit of a safe space. It's not recorded. It's all organized by alt. So they do the logistics, registering and everything. And then we discussed about the uncomfortable topic, right? And it's not recorded. So people can say whatever they want. And obviously it's got to be respectful. It's not like we're going to attack each other suddenly now, <laughs> virtual attack. And it's within the system as well, like around LT, not like side tracking. It's about an hour. And we have uh, one thing that I've started to do from last academic year is a follow up blog to kind of take the reflection and those who could have attend because a lot of people have worked because the meetings are during work hours, working hours. So they can attend. Sometimes they register and they cannot join. And then we have open forums, which mostly deals with us or so getting speakers to talk uh, for our events. One thing that we're doing at the moment, they are coming for free, which to me, I am not a big fan of DI work that's done for free. I think I've been saying it a few times. <laughs> and um, because DI work is very, very difficult. One of the things that I often tell people, um, like if you do DI work on a day-to-day -day basis, you need space to actually get out from just from hearing the issues that people have you need to take that space and some people even have you know their own mentors have their have counselors as well so that's why it's important to value that okay it's not just okay you need to do that but then people you know they are not paid they are not getting the the things that they need even for training for because the people who are talking about anti-racism as well they they need money to do other things so one i'm not a huge fan of it but hopefully alt has like 
some amount of money that we're going to kind of maybe start to give uh, financial recognition to speakers. And we also have started the speaker certificate. And I think it's the first time because I remember Kerry designed that like, oh, okay. So it's, I think it's the first time now we, we're going to do that. So we've issued for who? Um, Maria, Maria Carlos. So we had someone uh, from uh, University of Columbia. Yeah. And then we have reading groups, which are closed. That one is like 90 minutes. So you get some reading. Uh, I very much focus on open resource materials because one thing around equity is not everyone has, marginalized groups don't have ready to go money that they can just go and buy a book, for example, or have the time because uh, to go even to the public library to get books sometimes because they have caring duties, they have all the additional things that basically squeeze them, say, please give me something quick that I can read and I can contribute. So, um, that's a few of the things that we have. Now I've got a QR code if you want. Everything is pretty much, I've made sure that everything is on the alt website as well. So we've got a web space on our page. We've got a blog space. We've got a YouTube channel. I think so far with two events that have been recorded because before the other events, um, when, before November 21, well, they were part of, it was not yet a thing. So uh, we don't have recordings for that on all page. And then we have resource materials. And in the resource materials, we have suggestions also from people if they've found a course useful or a campaign useful, it's all in there. And these are some of our, our activities that we actually did. Um, Ola Tunde is actually, uh, Associate Dean who works around um, DI. So he actually talked about some of the, there's a YouTube um, recording as well available. So he actually spoke about um, achieving inclusive education using AI uh, in June. And then in March, we had uh, Maria Miguelis Carlos who came from uh, US. It was a paper. So she wrote a paper around anti-oppressive pedagogies in online learning, which I had been sharing from, I think, <laughs> the law of what, what, one and a half years. So people were like, oh, I found this paper useful. I was like, okay, we're going to get her to maybe come and talk. So she's actually done a um, literature review on all on a lot of papers and other researchers. So that paper is, it's quite bulky, but very useful for if you want to learn about uh, what oppression in technology use of, uh, you know, in online learning is. And then we had, there was one session that I did, which was around creating visibility for uh, POC colleagues, people of color who work in junior role. That was actually from requests from the community Actually, it was an event with Laurie. Uh, I think there was a session that Laurie was saying, oh, he'd been to an old session where there was someone who came along and um, the person said there was no one else that looked like him in the conference. So we're like, okay, how do we create that? How do we change that? So um, you would probably see we're currently recruiting for offices as well. And we welcome junior people as well without experience who want to join committees because I think I have the capacity I definitely have the capacity and patience to kind of give the mentoring that's needed and provide the, the uh, visibility so I'm happy to do that and then November last year we did something around we had a speaker um, Lisa Lane who actually she's also part of a group that they did a, they designed a course on future learn. So the blog is there, the YouTube link is there, lots of material, lots of comments. And usually when I write the blogs, I provide additional materials as well on top of what's written, what's what was said. So lots of reading actually in these blogs. And then we also did something around Black History Month, uh, what it means for learning technologies uh, and things like that. So th there are quite a few material online already. Now, um, what we plan to do is, as I was saying to you, this is voluntary work. It's important for me to put the team out in the limelight, put them to shine, because DI work is not easy. And if I don't do that, well, <laughs> I'm the chair, I've got to do that, I have no other choice. So there's a series of blog, Chris already wrote his blog, so it's gonna, I think, go in end of September or some point in time. And uh, that's one thing that uh, we're gonna do 
let people also start to know who are these volunteers. It's free work, right? But we need to create that space for visibility, promotion, recognition, and then more GI work. And um, uh, we have an assembly presentation. So alt assembly will be happening 19th of October where we're presenting. And we are looking, we have compiled um, the list, sadly to say, Billy, <laughs> I was actually looking for the list of all the alt groups and SIGs and find their contact. Not many of them were publicly available, even as a group, not even individual people, I'm saying, but even as a group. So uh, me um, and Rachel, we went and we went on every page, look at, you know, what the hashtag was, what this, because this was already available. So if all wants to use what we've put together, I'll probably send it as well. So everyone has it. Uh, we would like to have more collaboration. Now, the thing around DI, the challenge that I'm facing there is I cannot go and approach someone and say, would you like to collaborate on DEI? That's not impact. That's why I had on the earlier uh, slide, a space for real impact and change. That's not, a, there's not going to be an impact there. It's more like forced. Um, I, um, in a few assemblies now I've been saying, people are welcome to collaborate, come, we will do it. So I'm kind of waiting for that so that real change really happens. Um, and we are also looking at other LT stakeholders like, Jesk, SEDA, and, and, and if universities want to also get involved or invite for in-person, there's not much money, but if we, we get invited, we will go and probably do workshops. There have been lots of requests for workshops, uh, but I don't know without venue, how do we do it in person? Uh, not yet. So that's the better. Now, there's one thing that I put a lot of focus is the community, uh, the activities are community driven. It's not driven by me, it's not driven by Chris, it's not driven by, you know, just us, offices, is what you say you want us to do is what we'll do. So we've put out a survey, which is have your say, where people can say, okay, I want more workshops, I want more uh, uh, close group discussion, which are not uh, being uh, recorded, or I want more discussion on x topic y topic more on how to change things how to make real impact we've had people who said they want more activism as well or they want less of something so what people will tell us it's not just uh people who are members of the sig because other people also like you can click on members so we basically just listen and try to implement that we've done that last year We've done that the year before as well, even right before we were sick. And uh, it's something that I continue to do because I think that's how change happens. Um, now, why anti-racism and not something else? Um, anti-racism basically is a topic which gets very confused. And may I ask here with uh, a show of hand, um, how, how much do you know around the topic? So this is low, this is medium, this is high. Two hands is very high. Rich, you have to get, stop, stop the email. <laughs> okay, yourself, Eileen. Okay. Okay. And okay. It's, it's actually, especially in the UK, it's very, very, um, difficult to understand what anti-racism really means because there are so many things and sometimes when we talk around uh i mean i do other work around disability as well obviously diversity and, and inclusion is is kind of my focus and t and and tech equity um but sometimes when we talk around anti-racism uh, there will be the dilution of anti-racism oh let's talk about something else you know let's talk of it about equity in general that's something that we often find especially like if uh if there are white people because well there are white people for example who are disabled right there are white people who are uh categorized as lgbtq and everything so when they don't really understand anti-racism they kind of take that you know that topic and try to put it under inclusion i'm not saying that anti-racism and inclusion is different it is not it is actually subsection but when anti-racism is being talked we should not dilute you know that. so i'll give you a very 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 concrete example real example so that actually happened on LinkedIn 
earlier this year, but I don't know which month. So there was somebody who posted a video about racism in, uh, I forgot which country, but it was a video without captioning. Now, captioning is a big thing with, in UK because we've got a law about it as well, okay? Now, in other countries, there's no such law. Someone posted a video about a racist issue and then you had um there was a white male who oh pretty pictures okay and i was like people were like that's the only thing you could say pretty pictures uh, or you don't comment right and then he started to say well if you would have visited my profile you would have seen that uh, i can't hear you know i'm hearing impaired all these things one why would people go and visit the profile of everyone who comments and why would you make a comment only about the prettiness? Because if you, if someone really wanted to have a discussion about that, I mean, it was pretty like clear what was happening. Can someone please translate or tell me what you know what's happening there? What ended up happening in that real story thing? Two black women ended up apologizing to that white male. And that guy, by the way, is a DI lawyer. He's a lawyer. He does around DI, but he only deals around disability. That's the problem. He's got very, very little understanding of what anti-racism is and where he should speak and not speak. So what ended up happening is an anti-racism issue ended up being two black women apologizing to the white male who has a disability. That's often something which is very uncomfortable actually in the UK because people get confused around you know, inclusion and anti-racism. They are like, oh, you know, we'll talk about everything else. And there's also intersectionality that comes on top of it. People also get confused around an intersectionality. And there's a lot of terms that have been created also to kind of dilute the actual problem. So you'll, for example, have people, um, we, do have, we do use term which is people of color rather than BAME uh, in, in the SIG. But if you ask me, I would prefer if someone categorized me as African Asian, which by the way, does not even exist in the list of ethnicity, I'm always putting other everywhere. I'm always putting other because it doesn't exist. That's how I categorize myself. So people have loads of discussion. We can be talking about global majority, about this, about that. It's basically just, again, what we're talking here is inclusion, but changing that actual discussion from anti-racism to, um, Okay, we'll include everyone, you know, we'll not talk of the actual problem. So, um, oh, yeah, the last bit, which is about meaningful representation. One thing that I was actually, when we were told, uh, I'm also part of the committee, conference committee. So when we were told that we were going to have uh, students, uh, I was like, Laurie, please make sure that the students are representative. Or, uh, or representative and no it's not it just doesn't mean that because someone is ethnic is representing a certain ethnicity that they are the right representative we don't need to go far to know what's happening with the government <laughs> okay and if you look at data that tells you how many um i don't have recent data but i know a few years back uk was one of the co european countries that had the most ethnicity in their, you know, in MPs and people in the government, but we know what the actual problem is, right? So representation have to be meaningful. Representation we need. If we don't have it, we need to. This is the first thing needed, but it have got to be meaningful, and it have got to be representative that are confident enough to put the voice there. Because if you put someone who's who won't actually defend what they need to defend, so it's not going to happen. Um, I was going to tell you, repeat after me, you can if you want. So basically, race impacts nearly every aspect of racially marginalized people's lives, from access to education to quality of education received, if there is even access to it, including to access to a dignified work, reward, promotion, again, if ever there is access to it. So when we're talking of anti-racism in the sector, we need to know. So the, the work that um, I was showing you earlier, Lisa Lane, uh, the course on Future Learn, uh, they talk a lot about representative of um, representation of people in development of software. It was around AI, use of AI and things like this. So representation of people in various levels 
of uh, the developmental stage of software, including users, testers, everyone. So I just wanted to ask, do you have any question? Uh, I mean, I don't mind taking question before we proceed. Billy is clear. Do you have a question? Oh. Confuse? Very interesting. Okay, I'll let you learn then. <laughs> so this, okay, because I'm using a PDF, sorry. <clears throat> so this is not my own graphics. I've taken it from somewhere else. Um, actually, here we have three zones of becoming, uh, well, three main zones of becoming uh, an anti-racist. So what we've got here is the typical, well, the first one, the pale blue one, is the group that it's easy to recognize, okay? It's easy to recognize when someone is uh, a racist, okay? They deny there is a problem, okay? Uh, they avoid the hard questions, uh, and uh, they talk to us. Uh, Sorry, I can't see on this. I actually need to look, if you don't mind. That was clear, but that was quite clearly yeah. yeah. So I'll look, I'll look here. So yeah. So I talk to others who look and think like me. So that's actually not exactly anti-racist, okay? Um, and then you've got the other set, which is I recognize racism, okay? I understand that. Uh, so th this actually would be the type of example that I was saying. Uh, earlier, like, for example, dilution of anti-racism under inclusion. So you talk about it, but okay, nothing is going to explode. The one thing, oh, by the way, we have someone who knows how to locate bombs in the room. That was part of the meet and greet this morning, finding interesting thing about people. So we're safe. Um, so this is basically those uh, so people with these char characteristics would fall under that. So I understand my own privilege in ignoring racism, okay? I educate myself about race and structural racism. Now, what you'll see here is it's a lot about me, me, me. So it's also when people are trying to learn uh, and, and also people who they are learning and making mistakes kind of also fit in that category, but they are not quite there being an anti-racist that they can you know campaign and activate for it and then you've got um so they, they could still by the way contribute to some conversation but not in depth so that's i mean you'll recognize yourself where you are right which stage if you're learning where you are which growth um and then you've got the last one which is the more darker blue or rather blue the others were pale blue which is okay identify how i may unknowingly benefit from racism uh, i promote and advocate for policies and leaders that are anti-racist i sit with my discomfort now this is something very very important sitting with one's discomfort you remember yesterday we were doing right so you were not in the workshop yesterday too bad he was he knows <laughs> we had some we had some comment which was was difficult actually to be honest and find the actual problem. So, and then I educate my peers uh, how racism harms our pro profession. I speak out when I see racism in action. I don't let mistakes deter me from being better. I yield positions of power to others otherwise marginalized. I surround myself with others who think and look differently than me. Now, these are um, you'll often find these with. Um, People who collaborate uh, externally as well, outside of uh, England, um, outside of UK, you, well, not necessarily, okay, but some of them may have this characteristic because they are exposed. So they surround themselves with people who think and look differently than them. That's why, you know, representation is important for that. If you don't surround yourself with people who don't look like you, you're not going to hear different perspective you've only going to basically you only echo what you know what you've been taught and you continue to carry this unconscious bias with you in all your decisions we are humans we'll make mistakes what we need to do though is recognize those mistakes and uh it's this recognition but then once you've recognized it how do i change it even if i have privilege 
How do I change it for others? Am I hearing what they are saying? Am I implementing, you know, we are, we are learning tech here. We had students earlier saying that, do people even hear us? You know, <laughs> like they will be saying, I need this, I need this. But what we are doing is we're, we're giving them something else. So are we, when, when we look at anti-racism, are we doing the thing that the people are saying, I need this, need you to do this, not that, but this. So this is this discomfort. Okay, I have, I have my bias, but I should not be doing this right now. I should be doing that, which that person is, is asking for. That's the need of the person. That's how I can support the person. So there's loads. Actually, it's a long, long discussion. It doesn't end 30 minutes, I'm afraid. <laughs> But it kind of, um, with the resources that you've got on this slide, I think it, um, it, it provides a start of a conversation. So I've got like, I told you I'm going to sell you things, which is to join us for impact and change. And um, we have, I have links on this, which is, and I've got a QR code, which is not quite coming up. Um, so if you want to join as an ordinary member, we've got a just mailing list. We are looking for a secretary and events officer to join uh, Chris. Chris is a bit alone at the moment and I, and it's not good to leave him alone. <laughs> he needs somebody else to help. Actually, we're looking for two more offices, events offices, because we want to really expand and we recognize that people do this voluntary right on top of other things. So we need uh, as much. And then, um, there are links. So there's also a blog and a, and a form that has gone out to join us as speakers. And we are going to look into how we can do some contribution uh, with a pot of money from all to kind of um, pay and recognize uh, those speakers. Because what I really, I would like also to see, like you have seen earlier from the slide. So I've had uh, Ola Tunde is based here. <laughs> He's from Nigeria, but he's based here in the UK. Lisa Lane is also based here. We've got Maria Valcarlos, who's based in the US. What, what, what would be good to see is to hear of anti-racism perspective from other countries and other regions uh, of the world, because it's good to be exposed to these cultural differences and perspectives. Uh, obviously, not necessarily being negatively influenced, because each one will have their own bias, but obviously, you know, we're seeking speakers who can contribute and from what they can contribute, what positives do we take from that and, and make change. So um, that's, I actually did, uh, uh, Rachel was working on some graphics. So this is actually some text that Olatunde said was, well, he's basically an, an academic in, in business, right? Yeah, business, yeah, that's what he does. So uh, with, he has got an interest in uh, the role of technology in achieving anti-racist learning experience. And obviously he, that's his message for you to join us as officers. <laughs> and then I've got Amin, who is also our, who is our external officer. So he says, well, come and join us. <laughs> Whoever wants to come and join us. And um, we're looking to make an impact, uh, whether it's small or big, the impact needs to be done because we need to start to see change. We can say, very often we say, change takes time, but we've got to see something start to come. And um, this is actually a message from Rachel. Okay, okay, where does it go? So she says, it's a valuable, valuable asset to come to combat underlying racism for cooperation and collaboration, no matter where you sit in your profession. So she's kind of a junior role at the moment. She's new to the UK as well, as well as Amy. So they've been here for like about a year. And then we've got some uh, bits and pieces from our speakers as well that we've taken. Um, so that's it for me. We do have time for, I'm, I'm between you and the award reception. So question. <laughs> I, I would just like to say thank you very much. Um, I, I'm putting I you in the line. I'm speaking at the ALP um, EBI conference okay. um, in September. Mm -hmm. um, on unconscious bias and then AI. Okay. It's very interesting. So, so you should be referencing. There are two of them that we've done. So, the one with uh, Lisa Lane, the blog as well. It's got loads of materials around AI and, uh, you know, like how Nikon, when they had it, you know, 
like people from China couldn't use a camera because the camera kept saying, you're blinking, you're blinking. But they were not blinking. It's simple things like this because, and, and I think the product was developed in the US or something like that. So it's just getting the right people at the table. And um, maybe at the sake, I could put you a question because I think I'm, I'm, did you do your ask me thing already? No, that's tomorrow. Yeah. Anyway, I'll ask you anyway now. I think it's the right crowd to be around. Is um, maybe alt as a, I mean, if, if you look at the volunteer, that was something me, myself, I've noticed, which is uh, what I would like to see is like, as, I, as far as I know, well, I don't have ethnicity data, so I can't, because there's no ethnicity data captured so far, is... Um, what I would like to see is, well, there's only me and there's somebody called Manish, I think, who are chairs and of our color. I have never met that guy, by the way. <laughs> I don't even, uh, like, I would like to meet and I would like to see more, more diversity in terms of chairs, co-chairs, offices, and not even that, but, all, you know, like all the volunteers in terms of trustees, even in terms of staff. So, well, I guess the question that, that comes, sorry, I'm putting you on here. So what's what's the plan for the for the next six months one year and five years for us to see change and impact not just change okay because change can be we just put people of color there yeah. i want to so, see impact from a response um i'll try and keep as short as i can because i have to run but um, and that's not an excuse so within six months i would say that we've already made a huge amount of progress in this area like you said we don't capture or we didn't capture mm -hmm. any of this data on yeah. members and um, we conducted or marin conducted along with next thermal and auditor an edi review of all yeah uh, mm -hmm. which came with a number of suggestions mm -hmm. and recommendations for what we can do some of those are much longer term mm -hmm. strategic objectives that we need to look at but some of them are very much short uh, short term and quick mm -hmm. wins um and i i see it as a huge priority in terms of amplifying the voices like you mm -hmm. say that we have within the community uh, perhaps often overlooked mm -hmm. um, or perhaps don't have the platform that other people have been given so mm -hmm. there's certainly things that we can do and uh, in terms of uh, incorporating that data i think once we in a, in a year's time, we will then start to be able to look at, you know, group dynamics and mm -hmm. into how members are feeling supported yeah. and perhaps start to create those connections because mm -hmm. we might see a name, but we don't know where that name comes from. So yeah. my name's Billy Smith, you might think, oh, that's an English name, but actually, it, you know, it is, but, you know, my mum is, is, is um, Indian or half mm -hmm. Indian. Native American and Indian, so there is some some background, and sometimes mm -hmm. we, we don't see what's behind mm -hmm. the uh, behind the mm -hmm. curtain, if you like, as to people's backgrounds. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's got a story that they can tell in terms of yeah. how the equity, diversity, and inclusion has affected them. White mm -hmm. people, people of all colors, um, yeah, and from different backgrounds and different. So I I like what you mentioned in terms of mm -hmm. different countries because we have to learn and understand what is happening in different mm -hmm. contexts, particularly in higher education and we have so many international students that you're supporting mm -hmm. in Belgium that are probably English as a second language yeah automatically sets them to disadvantage mm -hmm. so I think there's a, a great deal we can do and I think the, the work of this group is going to underpin and, yeah. and enhance mm -hmm. that, that strategic um, element of what's next in terms of the EDI review yeah and I don't I think one of the changes we'll make imminently is that we'll be calling it a DEI review so it's not by, by which we yeah. of EDI and people just go oh it's another EDI thing mm -hmm. because I think sometimes we can you know, we do get a, a whole barrage of information coming our way mm -hmm. and um there has to be purpose behind it so yeah. I like how you've set out you know the, the reading in I think um, your graphic, um, it's not, it wasn't your graphic, was yeah. it? Yeah. Not mine, yeah. Okay, but I, that's a it's... good visual that we should be sharing with our community mm -hmm. and getting yeah. them to perhaps recognize where mm -hmm. they are yeah. um, independently. Yeah, I, I, what, what I can do after that, because I, I wrote a blog, uh, I don't know when it was, which was about pseudo anti racism, which is basically around that 
circle or thing you saw, which was like, how do you identify and how do you categorize? And given some example, obviously I have not given every single example, but it's good to know what's important is for people to recognize mistakes. That, that's the most important. We did that yesterday about change. What's the first step to change? And um, you were talking about your background. That's one of the reasons why we're doing these introductory blogs actually about offices. So people also know from where offices are coming from, as in from what background and what they are bringing and what they are doing. Because I think I think giving this, this visibility is important so we can recognize, okay, from what angle. It's also about celebrating the diversity of our members and mm -hmm. our groups and the different perspectives that they can bring into the work that we do. So yeah. um, I think there's a, a lot of uh, connectivity between mm -hmm. what you're doing and what we as an organisation need to do. And there's a lot of joining up that we need to do in terms yeah. of making sure that we're not duplicating either because from a membership perspective, mm -hmm. there's lots of information to take on board. And mm -hmm. what yeah. doing in a silo when they're Exactly, exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, one thing we would like to do more as well that we have discussed, I think, for, for quite some time is also, um, that's why I was saying, like, I'm not, I'm not going forward to keep telling people to other SIG and other groups to come towards me, because I, we know it's there, okay, as a fact that there are groups that have mainly been almost always been white members, white offices in the group, would like to see more diversity, but it's difficult for them to understand probably um, action on how to do it would like to give a hand in some way and say this is how you could do it in the language in in how you are recruiting offices it's volunteer role but still you know you you need to kind of have diversity in some way it's also and, about creating that safe space yes that is, that's that's very very important None of these discussions yeah have yeah so i think that that is something that's yeah. Creating that safe space. Yeah, because uh, you you could have diversity, but then you know, like the person, the person of color is not feeling safe in in that environment. So uh, we uh, that's one thing we would like also to do with all to be involved in the processes and feed because we've got the pool of people who can provide this input and suggestions and feedback, right? So make use of that and kind of feed. One thing I can already tell you: this conference is a big hit among people of color. One, uh, I don't know. I think I think probably that's the first time we've had a people of color as a chair, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and um, even diversity as a theme. I actually wrote a blog because I interviewed Santa. Uh, I went and looked at all the previous conferences and the theme. That's the first time. Usually, uh, even when I presented tech equity and all before, I've had to put it under wild card. But now we have had this is the first experience with diversity and, and uh, you know, it's actually a theme, a main theme, and it's making an impact. Right? Yeah, going back to your people, about money and a pot of money. So there will be some funding for this, but also equally, I think there's opportunities here to see it now perhaps external um, sponsorship, perhaps bring it to external. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Oh, exactly. I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, this is this is why a lot of, a lot of DEI work doesn't get done. And I'm going to put my whole inclusion fa uh, hat right now. Even disability, you don't see a lot of disability support being done in institution because they tell you money. It, it's an issue because if you want to change so you have a question now okay it's not a question really it's a comment and mm -hmm. i'm really pleased to see you're just putting a little bit of money aside for it but mm -hmm. to be honest you know but, uh, let's just take it back to the start in terms of where this group came from and i don't think it was any coincidence that it sort of organically sprang up really during the time of the sort of black right black lives matter. black lives matter you know people really just wanted to do something and I, I felt along those lines as well, you know, I've been working in education and technology for a very long time. And it's that sense, I know racism is wrong, I want to do something about it. And actually, this provided a forum, you know, you could go in, you could get some really good practical ideas of what you could do in your workplace, um, what you could do with your teaching and learning, what you could do with the systems, the AI systems and stuff like that. So 
the, the events we've got on have that sort of practical orientation of what, what you can do. And it, it can be just really small things, but it can be really impactful on really big things as well. So I know the money's important, but if you think about it, all the people who are doing these things, they're doing it because they're committed to challenging racism. And yeah. Sort of thing as well. so I know we're running over time. Sorry, we're running over time. Yeah, but the point that, uh, to pick up on that, I think yeah. that, that we are acutely aware that perhaps we need to ensure other people embrace this community as well. Yes. Particularly because mm -hmm. we are only a lone voice. You know, we can only do mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm really excited to work with you. And on that note, I'm going to have to yeah, carry on. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you, everyone who's been from low, middle, high contributor today. Okay.